come in. Ah, Adrian. Well, you're looking unusually lovely today. I want out, Martin. <laughs> Sit down, my dear. No, it's no use, any of it. I should never have come here. Did you drop in on Stephen at his office? Yes. What happened? Nothing, nothing at all. Oh, something must have happened. I just resent what you're doing, Martin. I've seen you do it to too many people. Adrian, please. Now, sit down. Well, what happened at Stevens? Well, Dr. Rossi was there when I came. He and Stephen had been talking about me. How do you know that? Well, I'm not a child, Martin. I know when two men have been talking about me. No, Adrian, you're not a child. Now, what did Stephen say? He turned me down again. Flat. Oh, he'll come round given time. No, I disagree. Sooner or later, he'll be eating out of your hand. And what if I refuse to stay here? Huh. Have you considered, Adrian, what your life would be without my protection? You have many enemies, legions of them. Virtually every man of medicine who was connected with your husband, all his admirers, all the men of the press who reported his work, the foundations that had such high hopes for his last years and were so bitterly disappointed. Peyton Place would seem like the Elysian Fields compared to what awaits you outside. There are other worlds. I could go to Europe. I have friends there. Would they still be your friends when they learn what Philip wrote me in that last letter? Your husband, like all geniuses of a certain stamp, had a conscience to equal his talent. He died tormented by that conscience. How do I even know there is such a letter? I've only your word for it. You don't. But if your own conscience were clear, you'd be dead sure of it. Now then, if you still want to leave, I'll ring for Weber. He can take you to the airport. You're a satanic, Martin. You know I didn't have anything to do with Philip's death. Yet you didn't have the slightest qualm about taking advantage of me when I couldn't think straight. When I was numb with grief. <laughs> you were never numb with grief, Adrian. You drove Philip and Knighton to his death. That's the plain fact of it. No. Yes. You married your late husband because his name was beyond reproach. The name you needed. You drained him of his resources as quickly and efficiently as a medieval surgeon drained his patients of blood. And then when there was nothing left... No, you're lying. Now, listen to me. As long as you stay here, you'll be protected from scandal. And far worse. What I ask in return is slight. That you play a role you played all your life. I want Stevens and Betty's marriage destroyed. And of the fine art of homewrecking, you have no equal. You know, Martin, even you can make one enemy too many. <laughs> I believe that about sums up the matter as far as my part in it's concerned. I've arranged for Stan Howard, the night watchman, to meet you at the security gate. I'm sure you'll be able to answer any further questions you might have. Thank you very much, Mr. Harrington. Not at all. Anything else I can do, why, please let me know. Naturally, I'm upset that Chandler happened to be working at the mill at the time all this took place. Well, he could have been working anywhere. Men like Chandler don't stay put very long. Well. well, good luck. I hope you find him. We'll find him, sir. Gentlemen. Oh, uh, Leslie, uh, may I talk to you for a minute? Come in. Thank you. It's about the gun. Yes, that's precisely what it's about. I just explained the whole matter very thoroughly to the police. Well, I wonder if you'd mind going over the whole thing again for me, please. The facts are simple enough. The shack at the security gate was broken into and a gun was taken. Well, why didn't you report it? I didn't know about it. I happen to be manager of the Peyton Mills, not the personal supervisor for security equipment. Right. So this gun was uh, stolen from the Peyton Mill and uh, slipped to Chandler. Evidently. You haven't got any idea who this somebody might be? Could have been countless people. No secret that we keep weapons on the premises. We have property to guard, equipment, machinery, inventory. But Chandler worked here. He knew the layout. He could have put one of his uh, cronies up to it. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, Chandler didn't have any cronies. No, that wasn't his style. You know, he was a loner. We both know that. I think maybe that Chandler might have been able to apply some pressure to someone who was outside of jail, you know. No, no physical pressure, but something that this Mr. Anonymous didn't want revealed. Something that might have gone back to the time when Chandler was known as Jack Forrest. Well, it seems plausible. At any rate, I'm sure the police will find the man in short order. Well, I don't 
don't know about that. Tell me something, Leslie. What do you think of a guy anyway? That just to save his own rotten neck will turn a guy like Chandler loose. I mean, Allison and Rachel, their past. But you turn a guy like Chandler loose and he never looks back, you know. All he can see in front of him is one big future. You know what I mean? Well, then, of course, you don't have a daughter, so you may not know the feeling. You know, I don't need a daughter to despise what Chandler is. And I resent the implication that simply because I gave him a job, I'm to blame for his being a social misfit. A social misfit? <laughs> Boy, that's terrific. Leslie Harrington, <laughs> an outraged citizen. What's on your mind, Elliot? Why did you come here? To accuse me of making a gun available to Chandler? Well, I've made some mistakes in my life, but I've never been accused of being a fool. If I wanted to help him, a ridiculous concept, but I'm trying to swim through your reasoning. If I wanted to help him, would I allow a gun to find its way into his cell? A gun that was registered to the Peyton Mill? Now, oh, come on, Elliot. You're a newspaper man. You're supposed to have a mind. Well, Chandler sent me that gun. I want you to tell me why. Why? I should think that would be obvious. You said yourself he was twisted, distorted. Well, that's not an explanation. That's an attempt to avoid one. You're not trying to find any real logic behind it, are you? Yes, I am. A special kind of logic. The kind of logic that only a twisted and distorted mind is capable of. It's sort of a supernatural knowledge of a man and what makes him tick. What do you mean? Have you ever heard of the apple of discord? Let me tell you about it. There's an old Greek story that a group of goddesses were having a party one night. And suddenly in this doorway, this witch suddenly appeared. And in her hand, she had a golden apple. And on the apple was an inscription. And it said, this is for the fairest. And she took the apple and threw it right into the center of the room. And all the goddesses set upon one another because they couldn't decide who deserved the apple. And the Trojan War resulted. And you're suggesting that Chandler sent the gun back to accomplish the same thing? Exactly. I think he sent that gun back, figuring that all his enemies would set upon one another and try to knock each other off. Now, I know why he dislikes me, Leslie. But why does he dislike you? I refuse to put up bail for him. Why should he need a better reason? Why should he expect you to put up bail for him? Because I employed him. Why would you employ him? I'm rather surprised at you, Elliot. According to your theory, you're playing right into Chandler's hands, doing exactly what he wanted you to do. Well, I'm afraid I have to get back to work. If I don't have time for a Trojan War, not today. Well, one more thing, Leslie. See, I think Chandler would have sent that gun to the police, accepting that they were a little sensitive about your executive position. But I'm not sensitive, Leslie. And if it takes the rest of my life, I'm going to find out who gave that gun to Chandler. <laughs> I think he's the real monster. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. You can talk to him. Influence him. If living like that depends on him working at the mill for the rest of his life, well, that has to be his decision. He'll only make a fool of himself if this comes up in court. You're not going to break up my marriage. You heard me out. But what I said meant nothing to you, did it? If you'll excuse me, I have a very busy day.